Welcome. I see it's already quite late and it's on a Friday afternoon. I appreciate you are here. Um, I'm sorry, the, I, I didn't really update the slide title, so it, it's supposed to be something with uh, Service Assurance Framework, but it's tightly connected with each other and you'll see in a second why or how. Um, and it's still mostly about CentOS, but on the other side, uh, with uh, tightly connected with a product as well. So, um, my name is Matthias Runge. I'm working currently in a group uh, doing metrics and monitoring within Red Hat, and in the larger scope in the uh, OpenStack group. Um, I will be briefly taking a step, uh, a look at the performance monitoring we did in the past within, uh, within the OpenStack world and uh, what we are going to do the next, uh, over the next time. Um, so this whole effort started when we um, were, well, we were rolling out OpenStack as an infrastructure for especially large infrastructure providers. And when they had their tools in place, or this infra infrastructure in place, they discovered or asked us um, how are our services uh, performing? What's going on? And we were, um, how did you do this before? And so, so at the end it was, Customers were expecting us to tell what to do to monitor their services, as they didn't do before. We were, I was expecting they had tools and all, so, so preferred tools, not just tools, but preferred tools and preferred sets of uh, metrics that they wanted to provide. So this adds another puzzle to the um, Red Hat OpenStack project or product um, and it was intended to support operators at the uh, second day after installing. Uh, as you probably know, all Red Hat product, products have their upstream projects like Fedora used to be the so-called upstream for RHEL or overt has been the uh, upstream for Red Hat virtualization, and you probably also know the uh, RDO project um, as upstream for Red Hat OpenStack. Um, in the same way, the CentOS Ops tools SIG can be understood as upstream for the operational tool part in inside of uh, Red Hat OpenStack. So this is how everything plays together. Uh, to make it a bit more complicated, um, this illustrates where packages are coming from and where uh, the upstream sits. So let's take as a, an example um, collect D. Um, the upstream produces releases from collect D. We are packaging them under the CentOS Ops Tools umbrella and they are then um, propagated to OSP Ops tools, but on the other side, also to OVERT, they are reusing the same packages, and those packages are propagated to REV. Um, OpenStack releases um, every six months a new release that gets, pro uh, that gets introduced in RDO, and eventually that, that will land in OSP. So, this is how things are tightly interconnected. Um, to know what's going on, if you have a thousands of servers, you probably want to do something like centralized logging. You would be collecting logs. In this case, we cho uh, choose FluentD to ship the logs to Elasticsearch, but you could also use um, our source log or source log ng. Um, to ship the uh, logs to Elasticsearch and to do some kind of visualization like you see here in the screenshot. 
but you could also do other computation or even send metrics like the uh, overt uh, team does. They are using uh, Collect D and sending the um, metrics directly to Elasticsearch there. So for availability monitoring, we chose to use a um, package or two packages named Sensu and Uchiva. Sensu is the monitoring agent pulling uh, the various services for status updates. And Uchiva is the GUI you will see here. Um, it is um, easy to understand. So if you, if you see here the check critical, it's uh, maybe you see the red bar on the left hand side. Um, you can click on this, you see immediately the error message, what's going on. So this is mm, really easy to grasp. Um, for performance monitoring, we did something like we using Collect D, sending the Collect D metrics via the network to another Collect D, which sends the metrics to Graphite, which is the backend. The, and um, we also used um, Grafana to <coughs> display the metrics. I, I have a screenshot um, after. Um, there's nothing wrong with uh, Graphite. You could also use uh, Gnoki, which is an um, OpenStack um, project. Um, however, this setup has the lack of HA. So if your monitoring node dies, you don't have a clue what's going on. So um, I will be talking about this, how to solve this issue soon. So first of all, let's, let's, let's collect the pieces of the puzzle here and uh, show the proposed solution. So Collect, collect D is, the, um, is a quite lightweight collecting agent. Um, it's been around for quite a while. Um, it is designed for small resource usage, like the original um, contributor wanted to have this on his personal VM or even to be running on a um, network router, the one you're connecting to your DSL. Um, and it provides like 80 plugins for all kinds of usage, like for collecting metrics from Ceph, getting data from Libvirt. There are also tons of um, plugins to collect data from the network, um, but also some more um, different plugins like uh, getting stati statistics from game servers. You <laughs> it's um, and also, we have uh, bindings for Python, uh, Java, um, to execute shell scripts, and also Perl. And uh, the nice thing if, about this is also it generates both metrics and events. Like, it provides you uh, how you, the CPU load is, but also uh, generates um, an event when the network goes down. And you could directly do an alarm or do that uh, this alarm when the network died this third time, so depends on your configuration. Um, I briefly discussed this already. Um, when the net monitoring node goes down, you have no idea. Um, so we need a bit more. Um, you probably have heard of Kubernetes or, or OpenShift. So, just um, to mention, it provides an environment where you could uh, run uh, containers, and this environment will also make sure the containers uh, are st staying alive, and if they go down, the, the um, environment will restart the uh, container again. So that's just making sure your monitoring is still in place. You also probably have heard of Prometheus, which is the kind of new kit on the block here. 
um, it is known for this, for the speed. Um, all, all these um, graphs are on their respective um, home pages, so you're free to either copy it from here or from their um, upstream projects. Um, I'm, I'm leaving this just for illustration. So what what you probably need to know is there is a a server which is also acting as a time series database. And on the other side, there is an alert manager which will send out notifications if you want to. Um, so the bad thing about Prometheus is it's explicitly meant to be single server only, period. So you cannot have two. Um, in that case, um, we are using a um, thing called Prometheus Operator, which takes care of deploying Prometheus on uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift, makes sure it, it really runs, and also takes care of um, having the configuration file always updated, or the, the configuration propagated to the containers in the right way. Also, uh, makes uh, takes care of deploying uh, a new version and um, will make sure the new version really comes up, otherwise you can uh, uh, roll back. Um, then, the next thing in the puzzle is uh, Apache Cupid, which implements the Cupid 1 protocol. Uh, the idea is that you have uh, things we call QDRs, Cupid Dispatch Routers, here in the darker um, uh, bar. Those um, QDRs are building a mesh. I have a better picture here. Um, so if one QDR goes down, there's no need to worry. They are connecting to all of these and so at the end, um, it will be something like Colic D will send out to a bus built by these Cupid dispatch routers. Those routers will move the messages or metrics through their mesh to a component named telemetry consumer which will take out the noted notes um, like metrics or logs uh, events from the bus and Prometheus will scrape from them, from there. The other um, thing I didn't mention from uh, Prometheus is Prometheus is meant to be pulling metrics, meaning you have to define a set of targets which Prometheus will visit again and again and again and uh, pull metrics from there. However, if you're um, having 10,000 of nodes, you probably don't want to open up ports on all those servers to a Prometheus to reaching out to each of those nodes and pulling data from them. With this QDR and telemetry consumer construct we just have a single source to be pulled. Um, and Prometheus is also providing the data to a GUI named Grafana here. Both the telemetry consumer and also Prometheus are running on the Kubernetes cluster or on OpenShift, and that way we make sure they, st they are still alive. So this is a somewhat dark screenshot that you probably have seen Grafana. If you're buying a license for Grafana, you get a, a, a GUI with a white background instead of uh, dark. So that's a distinction. Um, then, final step is if you want to know in this picture, Collect D is collecting all kinds of things like um, CPU usage, you could hook up the temperature, uh, you can 
take a look on your file system usage and whatnot. And in this case, I defined a curl command to curl for a open, specific OpenStack API. And um, I'm expecting the API to answer requests in quicker than 0.2 seconds. If not, for more than three minutes, I will get an alarm. Or I could also define this goes to a pager, this goes to email, this goes nowhere. Um, and also the person on the call could get a uh, message like the OP uh, OpenStack API is acting slow, do something. You could also define um, alarms like um, if your file system is continue to, to grow in that rate as now, your file system will be full in four hours, which is kind of neat. It give, gives your um, support person some warning or some time to react before uh, something serious happens. So, um, I would like to see uh, in the future something like self-healing or taking some certain actions based on metrics or based on events already happened. Like, if I have a server connected via two networks and the third NIC is just unconfigured somewhere and the network goes down, I would like to see some network re reconfiguration so that there could be a failover in a way that I don't need to interact with the system. I will get a notification, oh, I reconfigured your server, period. That, that's neat. I, I don't like to see someone sitting in front of Grafana and waiting for something bad happen. That shouldn't have happen. Um, there are also um, OpenStack projects or projects like OpenStack Vitrage, which is, which is a root cause analysis tool trying to find the root cause of a failure that might help, that, that it also might help to um, circumvent the issues and reconfigure your system. Or there is a um, OPNFV project named Doctor. It's basically doing the, th the same. And um, I'm somewhat foreseeing uh, deprecating Sensu in favor of Alert Manager and Prometheus in the future. Um, so it becomes more and more a hassle of uh, keeping uh, Sensu alive for, for me or for us. So that has been quick. Do you have any questions? You will deprecate Sensu? Yeah. So you will ship uh, in uh, the future uh, via CentOS SIG, uh, Alert Manager, and Prometheus? Um, this, um, what I did not mention is um, what, what you're seeing here is you're running CollectD on some infrastructure node. What's running on the OpenStack uh, on the Kubernetes cluster is running in uh, containers. So this is some additional setup you will need, and um, there are containers up outside for uh, to uh, for Kubernetes for Alert Manager and so on. So I, I'm n not really looking forward to build and support Prometheus Alert Manager and friends in the OpenStack and uh, the um, CentOS Obstacle SIG. So I'm sorry. It's, I, I roughly counted and there, uh, there are way too many packages to package just to be able to build Prometheus. And also it requires Golang which is not anymore in CentOS. More questions? Anyone up for a beer? Did you start to work on the scalability uh, of 
Okay. Um, this design? Yeah, so the, um, that's a, actually a, a good question. Um, a colleague of mine uh, scale tested this, and the um, idea was, or the, the yeah, the idea was we need to be able to collect metrics from a thousands of nodes. So a thousand metrics from a thousand nodes in one second interval. And um, there is also a desire to go below that, like in 0 0.1 seconds interval. And if you're looking into what uh, telco companies will want is they want a failure mitigation within 50 nano uh, microseconds to reach the five or six nines they need. And so it's, it's becoming clear this needs to be quite fast and efficient and also 50 milliseconds, there's no way that a human can interact with that. It must be automatic. I, I see a point of someone still wanting to look at Grafana and Grafana stats and seeing, oh yeah, my service has been up 87% or whatever. But that's basically it, what I see for Grafana. So you mean this kind of architecture is definitely not going to be sufficient for that so, kind of requirement? So I mean, 50 milliseconds is a uh, is it? Are you suggesting well, that they could use something like this? Or are you suggesting that this is not a solution? I, I'm suggesting to use this as a solution oh. instead of going back here oh, okay. yeah. to there. It, it could potentially provide the same, mm -hmm. but I, I see some scaling issues and also the availability issue. Like if this goes down, you don't know anything. And yeah. for this setup, is there any example available at small <coughs> scale where you did it, where you have a configuration of that? So there is um, documentation on the uh, up on GitHub. I, I'm happy to point you there. Um, there is a description how to deploy this. Um, basically, you would be requiring a Kubernetes cluster or an OpenShift cluster and you would be changing um, your repository or your container repository to a specific additional endpoint and you would be pulling in the so-called service assurance APB, which will pull in all the things and will deploy it on the server side. For the um, infrastructure side, I have some um, Ansible playbooks. But also if you're using OpenStack, uh, I mean uh, OpenStack platform, it is included uh, since OpenStack uh, OSP 14, which was released uh, quite recently. Uh, in this uh, platform, uh, you were speaking of uh, new things for alarming. So is it it's not yet here or...? It's, it's not yet there. So we are in the process of deprecating Sensu. Sensu is still supported, but I would propose, or I'm proposing to change this for the future. And uh, uh, I didn't uh, practice with uh, alarming with Prometheus, based on Prometheus, but is it some, because some customers are still using all things because they have years of production. Mm -hmm. Is it something yeah. really high, high level uh, for, uh, around Prometheus? What is a good thing about alarming? You spoke of uh, alert manager. Yeah? So, you would be um, defining the alarms or these, these rules in Prometheus in the config file or in an additional file. Alert manager is just a piece of handling out the alarm or <coughs> making sure you get your, your pager <coughs> or Slack or whatever call. Mm -hmm. Everything else is included in Prometheus itself. And we can consider it uh, very stable for, for big production, this alarming part? Yeah, uh... I, I would say yes. Mm. So Prometheus is not <coughs> that new anymore. It has been on the market for mm, around five years now. But it's 
it's beginning to stabilize. Because yeah, in the past there was some difficulty of to, to merge the tooling of collecting data on alarming, and perhaps now this product is doing both. So this in project, yeah. what, what I did not tell you here, um, this is only uh, this is just collecting the metrics. <coughs> so you could uh, generate um, alarms out of metrics, mm -hmm. uh, but you also have events. Mm -hmm. So the events and, uh, and metrics are not the same, and events are not consumed by uh, Prometheus. These events will be consumed by um, Elasticsearch, which I mentioned some slides before. And there is a, a short circuit between um, uh, Elasticsearch and uh, Prometheus uh, or um, Alert Manager to get the alarms out of Elastic to Alert Manager or Prometheus. So yeah, so, so yeah. In, in that case, these two things are merging together. But uh, it's, so it's, it, the alerts are only based on uh, metrics or there is so no props, for example, to, so to, to check something, to, what, what monitoring solution on alerting are doing sometimes is to go to check something from a central place. So, so um, you could have um, a case, so if, if a network goes down, you could configure the um, OVS um, events plugin inside of Collect D, which will emit an event if a network blah 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 goes down for whatever reason, and uh, this will land in via Elastic in mm. Prometheus and then in <coughs> Alert Manager. Um, you will also see probably some other metrics like oh this link is not there or I don't see any traffic on this link anymore but there's supposed to be some traffic so you could also have a Prometheus rule alarming you if there's no traffic so that alarm will also be forwarded to uh, alert manager and alert manager will make sure you just get alarmed once for me it's a complicated path to go from the to, to have the data at the end when you spoke of Sensu, Sensu is there is a module, for example, to check the API. So it's yeah. I'm checking wrong, good or not. So yeah. yeah. So with Prometheus, we don't have these things to make a check. Uh, um, you, you have a check um, like this one. Um, if the uh, the um, the API is not responding, mm. or in this case. Less uh, more than 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, so it's not only uh, based it's on event or data. It could be also. Uh, it could, or, mm. or it could be alarming you if um, the temperature goes below uh, or above and so on. So there are plenty of ideas what to what to do or which alarms to create. But uh, that being said, um, it's. Unfortunately, not that easy. So, um, if you're doing or if you're a um, web hoster, you wouldn't expect a high CPU load around the cluster, or even in, or maybe a high CPU load in spikes. But if you're a hosting a compute environment, you should be alarmed if the CPU usage goes below eighty percent, for example. Otherwise some jobs are dying or it's the infrastructure is not loaded so you, sh you should be shutting something down so it, it highly depends what the use case of that infrastructure is to tailor this alarms so i i see demand of have, having generic alarms yes but Still, it depends on the intended use case. Same goes for um, collecting metrics. If you're doing the um, web hoster thingy, it's probably okay to collect every 10 sec seconds CPU usage and whatnot. If you're more in the highest availability thing, you would probably go to 0 0.1 seconds collecting intervals to be, not to be sure you're getting notified.
<coughs> so there are many knobs to adjust. So this is currently, the, the, the current layout is at human scale, right? I mean, there is no uh, automation uh, in practice. No self healing yet. You mentioned that you were going to move probably towards self healing because you need to trust here sometimes. And you mentioned tools like Vitrage and Doctor. Where do these tools like Vitrage and Doctor fit in? on your slide with the QDR collection mesh? Um, they would be docking here uh -huh. at uh, Prometheus, so you would be forwarding the uh, data are out, of, out of Prometheus. Are they completely independent of Prometheus, Vitrage they, and Doctor, or are they, you know, they, are, they are independent of uh, Prometheus. <coughs> As I understand, this slide where you see, where you run flows of information, of even yeah. data coming from the left, from Collect D yeah. towards Prometheus. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you want to have a self healing system, then we have to have interactions, you yeah. know, going right. from the right to the left. Are these interactions also going to cross this QDR communication mesh, or do you envision, you know, a completely that, different that communication mesh? Still uh, to be evaluated. So basically, that communication network, this QDR mesh, is almost unidirectional. I mean, conceptually, <coughs> it, it could be, it, but it, it doesn't need to be. So I, I yeah. Think so my question was, uh, I mean, right now this deployment is, uh, I mean, at uh, human scale in, in terms of time. For, for the alarms, I mean, but you were talking about uh, 15 milliseconds. Uh, yeah, so in, in the fi 15 milliseconds, um, you uh, you cannot act. Yeah, but act so as so as this point. is the the outlook where to go, or what we what we need to achieve at some point. The and pointing to the self healing or avoiding issues. Thing to be set to to satisfy these these needs. This is probably also like uh, I mean it's uh, uh, for um, local instead of having remote places. So you have to deploy this kind of uh, infrastructure on every. If you have several data centers, for instance, you have to deploy the same because then you you are also right. uh, if, if you have a, a delay, you have the, the latency also. Right, so this is, or if you're talking about the 50 milliseconds, yeah. this is obviously the case for a local data center. Mm -hmm. And you, you also need to have fast interconnects between yeah. your nodes. It's, it's not going to work the same way in the edge, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So why are you looking into this, you know, into these extremely demanding requirements from telcos like 50 milliseconds? Does Red Hat provide Operation and services to telcos or consulting services to telcos and do you have the engineers say a package solution, monitoring solution for the telcos <coughs> or are you providing I mean, uh, what kind of services are you providing to telcos? I mean, you are from Red Hat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And does Red Hat have like uh, consulting services uh, where you, you know, you see people and they spend weeks at uh, Deutsche Telekom or whatever? Uh, in, Mm. Just curious. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, for the code, it's mainly open stack. Yeah. <coughs> Anything else? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.